You've um, had a really incredible career so far. Um, I mean, working with the likes of Beyonce and David Bowie and just all sorts of celebrities, but you're also now working at Amazon. How did you come to do this? Well, thank you so much. It's such an honor to, to meet you and seeing the wonderful work you're doing is so inspiring. For me, I started off at a young age as a photographer. Um, it was a typical immigrant's journey, actually, leaving India and finding that photography and storytelling were the, the main ways that I could still connect with the people I'd left behind that I love so much. And I started photography at, a, at 14 and traveled the world um, as a model because I couldn't get a job as an assistant photographer because I was not able to carry enough heavy stuff. Um, but I was able to found a school in India um, when I was 19, and that was the greatest joy of my life, and it still is. Um, and so from that uh, early, the, the early experiences of traveling the world and getting to see and learn from the, some of the poorest but most incredible people that I've ever met um, in India um, really inspired me. And as I, uh, I was discovered by David Bowie and Iman um, while I was a student at Princeton. And they found some of my work published in some underground magazines and um, asked me to do their album covers and book covers and, and uh, launch my, Bowie launched my career as a director. Um, and the, the project we worked on was about mass shootings. And uh, Bowie was exploring the mind of a mass shooter, so looking at this phenomena early on before it had become uh, as prevalent as it, as it is now. And I was so excited to be able to use storytelling to address really important issues. And so while I, I launched Beyonce and, and Lady Gaga, um, and I really enjoy working with all kinds of artists, uh, my heart always remained with those whose voices don't get heard as often, those uh, marginalized people around the world. And as I had this sort of uh, dual life of doing you know, 35 L'Oreal campaigns, but going back to India and working with the students of the school, I was kind of torn between these two worlds, and I found the way to bring them together by working with celebrities and utilizing the connections that I'd built to, to help the, the causes that are really important to me. So your new project is working with the Puyanawa people in Brazil. How did that come about? So I've, I've had a great passion for indigenous stories uh, ever since I was a little girl. My best friend was murdered when I was nine years old, uh, and she was an indigenous girl in Canada. And I always felt that there was so much more she could have done in her life. And I felt that somehow, if I could put my attention to the things that, that she had shared with me, um, you know, that, that would, in some way, just, just to honor her. Uh, so throughout my life, I've, I've had really wonderful relationships with indigenous peoples, and I've learned of, of their struggles. My grandmother was an indigenous person in India. Um, and so I, I grew up hearing the stories and recognizing just the challenges that have been faced. Um, so when I had the opportunity to go to the Amazon again, I've, I've been a couple of times, um, but I was working with a company that uses carbon credits to protect the forests, which is something I'm very passionate about, is finding ways to protect the ecosystems. And so I met the Puyanawa and filmed with them, and we became very, very close friends. I got to spend time with them in their homes, and, um, and when that project didn't quite work out as, as we had hoped um, on the financing side, I just was determined to find other ways to, to help them buy back their ancestral lands. So the Puyanawa, um, this is Puy, Puyanawa, uh, he's the spiritual leader of the tribe, and uh, they shared with me the story of how they were enslaved a hundred years ago, and they had their lands taken from them, and their culture, and their religion, and their language, and they've been trying to get it back ever since, and the culturally, and um, their relationship with nature has become very, very strong again. They've been able to, to recreate and take further um, their, their harmony with nature. But in terms of protecting their lands, they're, they're all being at risk of being burned currently. So 
So I was able to bring them on board a project I was doing with the XPRIZE Rainforest. And what's super exciting is bringing science and indigenous wisdom together. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, I mean, it's two very different worlds, um, highlighting sort of the indigenous knowledge, but then also the cutting edge technology. So what was that like, um, you know, doing the prize in Singapore, what, a couple weeks ago? And, and congratulations for being a semifinalist because it was a very, very strong competition. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, it was very exciting and it still is. It's still ongoing. It's, it's a five-year prize process. Um, but I was able to bring 120 scientists, mostly from Michigan State University, uh, experts in all different areas, together with the Puyanawa tribe. And we set up these Zoom calls so that we could really work together and and have that indigenous knowledge really inspire and, and uh, shape the technology and science that we're developing. Because so often these two worlds are separate. And it's not just that the Puyanawa can benefit from those technologies. The technologies and the scientists benefit greatly from the Puyanawa knowledge as well. Um, and so you have your, uh, you're working on another sort of technology project in, in, in the energy sector. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I've, I've really, come to realize that I can't just go around pointing at the things that are wrong in the world. As a filmmaker, I've spent a lot of time doing that, fighting trafficking and um, getting uh, support for AIDS in Africa and things like that, which are important. But I, I've come to realize that, that I can bring people together and that that's something that, that I need to do. And so Open Origin is a, a company I co-founded. It's indigenous-led green energy from waste. So it addresses two of the biggest challenges that we face in the world, the overabundance of waste and our lack of green energy. And using indi indigenous knowledge and circular systems, it's a circular economy system that's inspired by indigenous ways of collaborating and making sure that nothing goes to waste and everything becomes part of a renewed cycle of, of benefit for, for humanity. Um, so you've had a lot of success creating campaigns and art and, and all these things as a way to, to reach audiences. Do you have uh, sort of advice for people in the room how sort of the elements they should think about when they're crafting a story in order to, to move people to action? That's a great question. I think the most important thing is to follow your heart. I think uh, in our culture, we, we prioritize mental gymnastics, you know, numbers and, and uh, scale. But when you tell us a simple story of, of a singular human, that can often be much more powerful because people really remember that and that resonates much more deeply. And, you know, I've, I've experienced it. You know, I was in the Congo and 10 million people have died there. And those numbers are so hard to process. But when you talk to one person that shares their family's story, that stays with you forever. So going back to the Punoa, so, um, the goal with that, of the film project, would be to help them restore their culture and their lands and secure, secure those lands for the future, is that? Yes, the yes. Their culture, they have restored, and um, actually, they have listened to nature, and they, one of the things that they share that I think is so important is that it's not that nature needs humans to take care of it. It just needs us to get out of its way, and we need nature in order to survive. And, and so learning from nature, learning from the Puyanawa people and sharing their knowledge with the world, as well as that, uh, the challenges and the joys of collaboration between science and technology and indigenous wisdom, uh, those are the subjects of this film. And, and it's very exciting to, to see how, how this is all evolving. Yeah, it's ex exciting. What, what's the sort of time frame for when, when we might be able to to see this? Well, I'm headed back to Brazil actually in two weeks. I'll be in the Amazon for another month. And hopefully, um, I, I aim to, to show at least a preview at the United Nations headquarters for Climate Week this, this fall. So, um, so really looking to accelerate this, this uh, project. And also, the series that you saw of images, that's expanding into a series of heroes of regeneration and climate. Um, and so not only the Puyanawa, but, uh, but other heroes all around the world will be part of that, that photo exhibit. Yeah, that's such an important message. Well, I'm, I'm seeing that we have to wrap up. So, so thank you very much for, for sharing, your, you know, sharing your experiences and your projects. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. So, so thanks again. Thank you so much for everything you do.